Thank you for joining us on a special Tech Talk with Adam Morgan as we celebrate World Autism Acceptance Day. Today is April 2nd, and we're really excited to bring you this special video as we wear our gold and red shirts um, to celebrate and empower those with autism and neurodiversity um, acceptance. Today I'd like to talk to you about three main differences that you may see in your friend or loved one with autism. The first one is communication differences. So when we look at communication differences, you're going to find that people on the spectrum, um, some of them use their speech very well in communicating with others. Where their trouble usually comes into play is the social communication. It's understanding slang terms or metaphors that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. They tend to take things a little bit more literally, and so they're very black and white to them, and so you may have to explain those metaphors. For example, if someone said to you, it's raining cats and dogs, well, that probably would indicate to most of us that it would be raining hard. But for someone with autism who takes things literally, they may actually think that cats and dogs may be falling from the sky. So you may have to explain that to them. They may need a little bit um, extra help with that. For some of those on the spectrum, who are autistic that might be non-speaking, for example, like my son, non-speaking or minimally speaking, um, that might be a little bit more difficult to break down those communication barriers. They may use alternative ways to communicate, such as pointing to letters on a board to form words and sentences, or using an iPad to communicate and gain access to age-level curriculum. For example, my son Adam is minimally speaking or would be considered non-speaking autistic, and he's a senior in high school. Yet he is getting a regular diploma and actually was the first student at his high school to take the ACT and got an 18. I'm super proud of him. And he uses the iPad to communicate and also get an, an, an age level uh, a degree. So we actually, wearing gold and red was perfect for us today because he actually announced yesterday he's going to be attending UMSL. He will be the first non-speaking autistic student at UMSL in the fall. We're very proud of him and breaking down those barriers. So even though he's non-speaking, he has found a way to communicate with others and connect with them on that level. So technology can be very, very important. The thing that I want to note to you is just because someone is non-speaking or minimally speaking doesn't mean that they're non-thinking. So we have to remember that speech is actually a motor difference. It's not a cognition issue. So there's really, if you look at most people with autism, it's really not a cognitive delay. It's a brain-body disconnect. So if you look at it differently like that, their brains are functioning just like yours and ours are. However, their body impulsivity gets in the way and their body takes over and does things that their brain doesn't want it to do. This leads me into the second difference that I wanted to talk with you about today, and that's repetitive behaviors or movements. I'm sure that you've seen some of your friends or family members that may flap or do a flicking of their fingers and will stare at it. Um, they also tend to have what we call echolalia, which is repeating phrases that you may say to them or from movies or scripting from YouTube videos that they have watched. They can use that for a couple different reasons. It may be a coping or adapting um, method that they use when they're in a stressful situation or are feeling some anxiety to help themselves calm down, um, or they could be using it to communicate something to you. Uh, the scripting could be used from YouTube videos that they've seen in a certain scene um, that they are pulling from to be able to communicate that back to you. Um, if it's worked in their film, maybe it'll work in real life. So you have to kind of figure out why they might be using that echolalic or repetitive pattern back to you. Some of the stemming and the flapping or the rocking that you see could be used as a coping mechanism if they're maybe in a large crowd or it's too loud for them and it's just a way for them, their bodies to cope with maybe some anxiety that is going on. A third thing that I wanted to talk to you about is sensory sensitivities or cravings. Now keep in mind guys, we all have sensory issues that we deal with. For example, you're going to laugh at this. One of my big things is I don't like cheese. I don't like the texture of it. I don't like the smell of it. Um, however, I will eat it on pizza or in a lasagna. If it's baked, I can eat it. But as far as putting a piece of cheese in my mouth, I, I don't do well with that. So that's a sensory issue that I have. I also don't like seafood. It's very slimy that I have, um, that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, it doesn't impact me 
or uh, affect me adversely in my everyday life. I just compensate and eat other types of foods. So for some of our loved ones who are autistic, the sensory sensitivities or cravings can impede or adversely impact their daily life, and it could flow over into other people's lives. For example, in the classroom, there's some kids who are sensory seeking as far as needing an overabundance of movement. So they're up and about and constantly moving about in the classroom, and it may be disruptive for you. They don't mean that. Um, it, it's not something that they're meaning to disrupt your life. It's just that their body is craving that need so much that it's impacting other people around them. And that's when we need to find a way to help them cope and adapt, which could mean a weighted blanket, a weighted vest, um, other ways that might help calm their body, or maybe they even need to go outside and swing on the playground for a little bit in order to get that craving um, need met, where then they can come back and focus in the classroom. The biggest message I wanna to send to you today is that autistic people People are just like you and me. They are different, not less. And so we have to start thinking differently in order to do differently. In order to accept our friends who might learn or communicate differently, we have to open up our minds and do things a little bit different on our part and not expect them to change. It's not about changing them, it's about accepting them. So if you do want to learn more about autism, we have a couple great book resources for you. And the first one is a book that was written by my daughter and I, and it's called Building Forever Friendships. And these are strategies to help your friend with autism or an or another disability in the classroom. And so we had actually talked about earlier um, the raining cats and dogs, the metaphors, which is one of my favorite pages. And so right here we talk about literal thinkers. And this is a page where it shows raining cats and dogs and what you and I might see, but what our friend with autism might see. And that can be a little bit scary. So we talk about scenarios in this book and just tips on what you might be able to incorporate. And what we really want you to do is come up with your own strategies to help your friend in the classroom maybe cope and adapt a little bit better. So this is Building Forever Friendships and you can buy this on Amazon. It's a great resource for your classroom and for your neighborhood to actually really educate others on people's differences and how we can learn to accept and include them in everyday life. The second book, and this is for maybe some older um, individuals, middle school, high school, and into adulthood, is a book that my son Adam is a part of. And this is called Leaders Around Me, and they're autobiographies of autistics who type, point, and spell to communicate. And this is 45 authors from non-speaking authors from all over the world who have shared their autobiographies with us. This is a great resource and also could be found on Amazon. And it is actually a number one bestseller on Amazon right now. So you want to pick up one of these two books. Another great resource is Tech Talk with Adam Morgan. It's his YouTube channel and he shares his successes and his trials and tribulations with you. Things that work, things that haven't worked. So hopefully these three resources will help you. We also have the Adam Morgan Foundation page and it is up on your screen right now, www.adamorgan.org, A-D-A-M-O-R-G-A-N.org. Hi, I'm Haley. I'm Colin. I'm Paige. And, and this, this is Adam. Adam. Okay, so our first question is, what is the best thing about having Adam as a big brother? So the best thing of having Adam as a brother is he's supportive, funny, and he always makes me smile. One thing I like about Adam is he's protective, lovable, and smart. Um, one thing I love about Adam is that he gives me a different perspective on life and teaches me lessons every day. <laughs> How has having an autistic brother impacted your life? Um, one thing that uh, has really impacted my life is he's taught me to not care really what other people think. Because some people stare sometimes when we go out in public or look at him kind of funny, which I think is ridiculous. But um, it kind of teaches me that I shouldn't care what other people think and just to focus on my family and the love that we have for each other. One thing that impacted my life is he saved a lot of fun and great memories with me. Adam has really brought our family closer together and made me see life differently. What is one thing you want others to know about autism? Having autism is not a bad thing and it's a part of their personality. Another thing is that they're just like anyone else. They want friends, they want to be able to go out and do everything that we do, but sometimes we get communicated. Share something you wish others wouldn't do when they interact with Adam. I mean, a lot of times people don't know it, but when they come up and try to talk to him, their body language kind of says that, like, not that they're scared, but that they kind of feel uncomfortable in the situation. 
when you walk up and you want to talk to someone just like anyone else, you would be very casual and friendly. And so sometimes I feel like some people's body language can kind of make him anxious and make us anxious when they um, stand and act like that. One thing I wish people wouldn't do when they talk to him is sometimes they have like a higher pitched voice or like a baby voice thinking he doesn't understand what they're saying, but he does. What is one thing you want people to know about Adam? Um, one thing I want people to know is that he's probably the smartest guy I've ever met. He's got a photographic memory. He had like a 3.5, a 4.0 actually, um, for the semester, last semester. And he's going to college, which is amazing. He's going to UNCLE, so we're all rocking our um, UNCLE shirts. Um, and I'm super proud of him. What is something you want everyone to know about you? I'm very smart and am going to college. Even though I communicate differently doesn't mean I don't think for myself. I want to have a career and family when I grow up. My mantra is, don't judge a book by its cover. What is something you want everyone to know about autism? It's not an intellectual disability but rather a brain-body disconnect. What that means is I have a very impulsive body that likes to take over my brain and show others the wrong message. I get very frustrated with my body and can act out. When others are kind, patient, and understanding that helps me relax and have better body control. Autistic people want what everyone wants, to be accepted and included.